Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best religious horror movies of all time. It has begun. Let us pray. For this list, we'll be looking at the best horror movies with prominent religious themes and plot points, because some films are impossible to talk about without revealing religious twists. Here is your spoiler warning. Which horror movie sent a shiver down your soul? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. In this film, a Catholic priest goes on trial after he's held legally responsible for the death of 19-year-old Emily Rose, whom he believed was possessed by a demon and on whom he performed an exorcism. Give me your name, demon! Names! Names! Through flashbacks, we find out what happened to the young woman and how she passed on. Jennifer Carpenter turns in an excellent performance as Emily, as she can go from being sympathetic to terrifying at the drop of a hat. Don't touch me! Jason, please. Don't leave me. After watching this film, you won't ever look at waking up randomly at 3 a.m. the same way again. Number nine, frailty. There are demons among us. The devil has released them for the final battle. It's being fought right now. But nobody knows it except us and others like us. An underrated horror gem from the early 2000s, frailty is about a man who's convinced he's on a mission from God to kill people who are secretly demons. To assist him in his Christian duty, he enlists the help of his two sons, Fenton and Adam. While Adam believes, Fenton, however, is convinced his father is insane. Dad's brainwashed you. It's all a big lie. He's a murderer and you help him. Nuh uh! We're just serving God's will. I'm killing Dad on you. Director and star Bill Paxton is disturbing as the devout dad who's pressuring his boys into committing acts of violence in the name of God. And the scenes where they confront the victims directly are intense. You didn't think anyone knew about that, did you? But God saw you. Dad, don't, please! What? And you can't escape God's wrath! <laughs> Though we'd never spoil them here, the movie offers some interesting twists as it goes along. Number eight, The Wicker Man. Can I do anything for you, Sergeant? Oh, I doubt it. Seeing it all raving mad. Forget the 2006 remake ever happened and watch this one instead. Searching for a missing girl, Sergeant Neil Howey carries out his investigation on an island inhabited by a pagan cult. Naturally, there's a culture clash between the cult and Howey, a staunch conservative Christian who finds the islander's customs to be more than a little strange. We don't commit murder up here. We're a deeply religious people. Religious? With ruined churches. No ministers, no priests. By the time Howie realizes that he was brought out to the island under pretenses, it's too late for him to do anything about it. I believe in the life eternal, as promised to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. That is good for believing what you do. This unnerving film, one of the best to come out of 1970s British horror, is perhaps best known for its shocking ending. Number seven, Saint Maud. Released stateside by the production company A24, St. Maud received critical acclaim when it came out. He's everywhere. He sees you. He won't let you fall. A devout Roman Catholic, Maud is a private nurse who's consumed by her devotion to God and feels the need to spread the word to others. Eventually, her religious fervor gets in the way of her relationship with a patient under her care, and it causes her life to spiral out of control. Rather to make you tame law for the Narubeth Moy, or have another minute with Kale Gafford. As Maud's constitution unravels, we're left to wonder whether Maud's divine manifestations are real or mere hallucinations. <laughs> well, that was easy. 
A slow burn, this psychological thriller is disturbing through and through, and will have you thinking about it long after the credits roll. Number 6. Carrie One of the most disturbing things about this Stephen King adaptation is how Carrie White is treated by her religious fundamentalist mother. And Eve was weak. <gasps> no, Mama! Eve was weak. No! Eve was weak! As Carrie begins to change in more ways than one, Margaret White tries to suppress actions she deems to be witchcraft. Her mother's cruel behavior includes locking Carrie in a closet, being physical, and shaming Carrie for undergoing basic womanly transformations. Witch. That's Satan's power. It's nothing to do with Satan, Mama. It's me. Me. If I concentrate hard enough, I can move things. For her brutal, captivating performance as Margaret, Piper Laurie received an Oscar nomination. Religious fanaticism is a common theme in Stephen King's works, and he knows how to bring out the terror that can lie under such theologies. My father, what name? How did I name? I can be God. I will be <laughs> Number five, The Witch. Boo! <laughs> Set in 1600s New England, The Witch is about a young girl named Thomason, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, whose family is expelled from their Puritan community and forced to live on their own. Following some strange occurrences, such as the disappearance of her baby brother, Thomason's parents and siblings start to suspect she's a witch and turn on her. Uh, I... Can we say Satan? Sign his book! Silence! Don't let an enemy! She plays a curse on me! They conspire against me! Thomason! This eerie and tragic film explores the themes involved with 17th century Christianity, including austere outlook and judgment. Director Robert Eggers gives a compelling debut with a quiet atmosphere, and Taylor Joy gives a devastatingly understated performance as Thomason. It was a witch. No. It was a witch, Mercy. You speak a right. Thomason! It was I. Liar. It was I what stole him. I be the witch of the wood. Number four, The Omen. When people think of antichrist depictions in popular culture, Damien Thorne is often what comes to mind thanks to this movie. Damien! Damien! No, 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 no! Ah! After various strange supernatural happenings, US ambassador to the UK Robert Thorne starts to suspect that his adopted child Damien is the son of Satan. What heightens tensions even further is the haunting score by Jerry Goldsmith, for which he won an Academy Award. <laughs> With great performances by Gregory Peck and Lee Remick as Damien's parents, the omen is so palpably chill-inducing that it still remains just as effective today as it was in 1976. I'm the one that's supposed to kill him. These are knives. He wants me to stab him. He wants me to murder a child. It's not a child. Number three, Hereditary. Peter! Get out! Peter! With films like Midsommar and Hereditary, writer-director Ari Aster sure knows how to make cults scary. In Hereditary, a family finds itself cursed by a cult that worships a demon named Payman. Not only that, but with it comes the revelation that the recently deceased grandmother was the cult's leader. <laughs> Pulling no punches, Hereditary relies on mood and atmosphere to scare audiences rather than cheap jump scares full of freaky, memorable scenes such as Peter banging his head on a school desk. Peter, what are you doing here? As if that wasn't high praise enough, Tony Collette and Alex Wolf give terrific performances as a mother and son who are victims of the cult. Number two, Rosemary's Baby. This masterpiece from Roman Polanski plays primarily with paranoia. I mean, don't get excited. Huh? Read what they do, Guy. 
They use blood in their rituals. And the blood that has the most power is baby's blood. And they don't just use the blood, they use the flesh, too. Rosemary, for God's sake. Mia Farrow is sympathetic as Rosemary, a young pregnant woman whose husband is secretly plotting with their neighbors and a satanic cult to transform her baby into the son of Satan. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? He has his father's eyes. Ruth Gordon, who plays one of the neighbors, won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her creepy performance as someone sinister pretending to be a sweet old lady and doing a damn fine job at it, too. What's in it? Snips and snails and puppies' dogs' tails. That's fine, but what if we want a girl? Do you? It'd be nice if the first one were a boy. Well, there you are. On top of the religious elements, when Rosemary's Baby was released, the film was notable for its themes surrounding women's rights, and they still resonate today. I just want to go to Dr. Hill and get a second opinion. I won't let you do it, Rome. I mean, because it's, uh, it's not fair to Saperstein. Not fair to... What are you talking about? What about what's fair to me? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The House of the Devil, this Thai West classic has a nice throwback vibe. <laughs> Prince of Darkness. You know that a John Carpenter religious horror flick is going to be interesting. The Serpent and the Rainbow, a Wes Craven film that shows the dark side of Haitian voodoo. <laughs> Hellraiser, demonic Cenobites blur spiritual lines. Who are you? Explorers in the further regions of experience, demons to some, angels to others. The Sacrament, a disturbing look at the Jonestown Massacre. We're not sinners. No, we're proving our faith here. Let's offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the Lord. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You'll have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, The Exorcist. While The Exorcist 3 is a surprisingly impressive sequel, we've got to go with the original for our number one religious horror film. 12-year-old Reagan is possessed by a demon, and it's up to Father Karras and Father Marin to save her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, by this sign of the Holy Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, Everything about the demon-possessed Reagan is frightening, from the makeup, to the 360-degree head spinning, to the otherworldly voice provided by Mercedes McCambridge. Your mother sit here with his cars. Would you like to leave a message? I see that she gets it. Director William Friedkin grounds the supernatural elements of the film with a chilling realism in more ways than one. The final battle between the two priests and the demon during the exorcism itself is one of the ultimate cinematic showdowns between good and evil. The, the power, power of Christ, Christ compels you. you! The power of Christ compels you! The, the power of Christ compels you! Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.